Listen to part of a lecture in an architecture class. The professor is talking about an architectural style in North America. Today, I'd like to focus on the Prairie School of Architecture, which developed the foremost architectural style in North America in the first decades of the 20th century. The impetus for the movement can be found in the philosophy and practice of Louis Sullivan, who was also instrumental in the building of the first skyscrapers. Other important influences were the English arts and crafts movement and traditional Oriental themes. The students and followers of Sullivan, the most famous of whom was Frank Lloyd Wright, developed Sullivan's ideas into a quintessentially American style, expressing an underlying belief in the unity of man and nature. When many people think of architecture, they think of large public buildings, but most of the effort of the Prairie School was devoted to domestic buildings. The most visible external feature of this architecture was the predominance of horizontal lines and heavy projecting roofs. The shapes were designed to both harmonize with and reflect the broad, flat prairies of the Midwestern United States. The guiding principle behind the interior of these houses was an emphasis on reducing the number of separate rooms to a minimum, opening up living space, and designing internal divisions so that the light and vista created a sense of unity. The interior corners typical of traditional European houses were abolished to create a feeling of movement and freedom. This aesthetic ideal was an attempt to make the living space more compatible with human proportions and living requirements. In line with their belief in the importance of nature, these architects related the interiors to the surrounding landscape by their use of windows that were continuous ribbons of glass, of projecting terraces with parapets that were used as planting boxes, and of deeply cantilevered roof overhangs that led the eye towards the horizon. Often natural rocks formed a broad fireplace anchored at the center of the design. Ornamentation was only permitted to complement the overall expression of the building. To this end, the Prairie School architects tended to use simple, unmixed, natural materials, sometimes with geometric or oriental motifs. For example, many of the prairie houses had a turned-up roof edge, reminiscent of traditional Japanese houses. What is the talk mainly about? What can be said about the nature of prairie school architecture? Select the building that could be classified as an example of the Prairie School style. According to the professor, how did the Prairie School architect make living space more compatible with human needs? Why does the professor mention traditional Japanese houses?